So today we're going to talk about light painting and all the different ways that you can light paint. So the basics of light painting. This is my light painting kit. I actually have a little separate suitcase for all the stuff that I do for light painting. And we're going to go over it today and kind of explain each one and how to use them and what to do. So let's get to it. So the first type of light source that you can use for light painting is basically a flashlight. I really like these little mag lights. Um, these are kind of the older model. And what I mean by that is they actually have a bulb that sticks out from the flashlight itself. That's really handy if you want to do some kind of light painting in a circle from the side where you can catch the light bulb itself. The newer mag lights actually have an LED that is recessed inside of a metal reflector or a silver reflector. And you can't really get to the side of the light um, with the newer models. So whenever I see some of these older models, I'll tend to try and pick those up as soon as I can. So with the flashlight one, as I was mentioning, the tip is exposed, which gives you the possibility of doing shots from the side, um, kind of like going around flowers. Um, you can also add colored gels over the bulb itself, just kind of bend it over the bulb without touching the bulb because it might burn through. So just kind of flex it around the bulb and you can draw around it to change the color of your uh, light bulb as well, which can give you some really cool effects. The next type of flashlight I use is this guy that I got. If you've watched my crystal ball tutorial, you know kind of exactly what this is. It's actually a shop light for automotive uh, purposes. It is rechargeable. It does have a port back here to charge it in. It has a bunch of LEDs on the front side. Um, and when you turn it on, you can have an LED out of the front or out of the top, then some out of the front. Push it again and they're both on. The thing that I like about this one is this makes for really cool light painting when you want streaks. Um, and the thing that I've done with this particular one is I will use it for streaks. I will then blow up the individual streaks and then over the, overlay them on a subject. Um, and a good example of that is this light dress that I made. Um, and I just kind of transformed and bend uh, the light rays on top of the body to make it look like a dress. So it's a flashlight I really like. I think it's pretty cool. I use it quite a bit and it's fairly bright. Another light source that I use is fire. Um, you guys have seen my fire tutorial, hopefully. If you haven't, it's on my channel. You can check it out. But I will also use fire just to create fire plumes to add behind some of my um, projects or just kind of individually. Um, a great way to make it. The only drawback to the WD-40 is there is some overspray that will land on the ground so you can't have some kind of greasy spots that land on the ground because it doesn't all completely burn up. But again, you can get some pretty cool effects just using fire. Um, another good light source for light painting is what's called electric luminescent wire. And basically it is wire that can bend, can move, um, it doesn't break, or at least I haven't broken it yet. Um, it's very flexible. I do find that blue tends to be the best color for light painting. Um, I do have some orange, red, and I believe white as well, but I have found that blue is kind of the best for that. With this, you just want to move it around. Um, I did have a couple of people ask me how I got the blue flame at the end of my fire painting tutorial, and it was actually this blue luminescent wire that I kind of uh, swung around the ground and over the model to kind of create the illusion of fire. You can get some pretty cool effects with that as well. And then although I don't have any in my kit right now, you can also use glow sticks. Glow sticks are great. You can use glow sticks. On these, I just kind of taped them to a ceiling fan, did about a two or three second shot um, exposure, and you can get some really cool effects with that. In addition to that, you can uh, tape them with clear tape to PVC piping um, and then just kind of hold the PVC piping and walk around with it or rotate or do kind of whatever you need to. Uh, you can get some really nice colors out of it. With glow sticks, you have to move it a little bit slower because it's not quite as bright um, as other light sources. Or conversely, you can increase the sensitivity of the uh, sensor in your camera to pick up the light a little more easily as well. Glow sticks are kind of cool, really fun to play with and relatively cheap. The next light source you can consider are neon strips. I got this kit quite a while ago. Um, 
then it plugs into a wall. It does have an adapter that does convert it to direct current, I believe 12 volt. Um, but it creates a whole bunch of different colors. There's a lot of different things that you can do with it. Again, you can tape this to PVC pipe as well with clear tape and just kind of walk it around your model, moving it quite a bit. Um, make some really cool effects. You can tape it to a car, have a car drive around, makes really cool effects. If you do tape it to a PVC pipe, what you can do, and what I did on occasion, is I just took some of this foam, pipe foam, um, and it's basically just a foam that kind of peels open, relatively cheap, and then I'll cut it into certain lengths, so like a shorter length, a longer length, and then I'll kind of cover the PVC pipe up with that portion so that the LEDs don't show. And you can kind of make some cool effects with that as well, kind of like in this photo. The one caveat about this is this particular roll is quite long. I'm not exactly sure if it says on here how long it is. I want to say maybe 15 or 20 feet. Um, and it's actually a little bit too long. Plus you have to have an AC um, uh, plug for it. So it's not all that handy or convenient if you're not going to be around um, an outlet. So what I did do is buy a smaller strip. This is six feet long and it's multicolored as well, but it is battery operated. Again, you can tape that around a PVC pipe and walk around your subjects. I haven't used this one in a shoot yet. Um, I got it relatively recently. I have used this one quite a bit. So if you do want to get some, I would suggest getting the shorter length, maybe six to 10 feet. That's probably all you're going to need and definitely battery operated. So I don't even know what you would call this contraption, maybe a shadow box. I saw something like this on a video that I watched and I'll provide a link for it down below. Um, a really cool video on light painting. Um, but basically what it is, is it's a box that allows you to print out anything you want to on a white piece of paper. Um, what you want to have is the background behind your image is completely black and then your image can be colored or whatever you want to. Um, you then stick it in to the box. And it acts kind of like a little projection box. And then you can basically stick a flash in the back of the box. And then every time you do the flash, you will see the image itself, but the black behind it will actually block it out. Um, I wasn't actually planning on posting this image a few years ago, but my wife really liked it, and so I did it. And that's exactly how I created the butterflies in this image. The butterflies are printed out, and the background is black. And when the flash goes off, you can only see the butterflies. If you are getting light through the black, either reduce down the power of the flash or print two pages exactly the same to kind of double up on the black ink and it'll block the light from coming out. Um, another goofy picture that I did as well is this one and you can kind of get the idea. I know, I know you can do this in Photoshop after the fact, but the fact that you can actually do this in one exposure, I think is pretty cool. The next idea is steel wool. Yes, you get you some steel wool. And when I first heard about this, I didn't think it was going to work because I didn't think steel wool was actually flammable. But steel wool is very flammable and it emits these beautiful sparks. So what you do is you get a piece of steel wool, fine steel wool, um, put it inside of a, a whisk, a metal whisk. Don't use plastic. Then I have a hook at the end of mine that came with the whisk. I actually have this whisk, whisk in two sizes. This is actually the smaller one. I prefer using the larger one. And then you just kind of swing it around in the air. Again, a long exposure will show the sparks flying off. I'm not going to go a whole lot into detail onto this one because I actually do plan on doing another behind the tutorial videos of a uh, steel wool shoot with one of my models in her car as soon as the weather gets a little bit warmer. So that one will be a little more detailed, but definitely a cool idea. All of these things are really cool. The really cool thing about light painting is you are only limited on your imagination and your light source. You could use sparklers, candles, basically anything that emits a light can be used for light painting. Go out there, experiment. Um, all of this is light painting. You're talking long exposures, so make sure your camera is on a sturdy tripod. Um, you usually keep your ISO as low as possible so the noise doesn't build up on you for long exposures. And you'll have to play around with your shutter length and your different apertures to see what you like best. Hope you liked it, and I'm excited to see some of your guys' work. Until next time, later.